All right, we started. I mean, you know how we do. Just start fucking talking shit and getting it figured out. Yeah. So we got the topic. We're all good. Uh, I like to think so. CEO Fierce I is in like the building. I like to think so. CEO Fierce. Um. We're here. We're here. Okay. So today's topic, or we need to discuss something first. Well, you know, how you know we... I'm here to let the people know where they can find us, how they can find us, how they can support us, how they can like and share. Okay. Blackwall Podcast. Okay. YouTube, Patreon, BLK Wall underscore podcast. Mm-hmm. Help us grow, disseminate, share, mm-hmm. all that fun shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else we need to talk about? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Support your local farmers. Support your local investors. Support the people that make the unseen things happen. Saucier on Shopify. Thank you. Saucier on Shopify for the best spices. Thank you. Let's support artisan creators of all walks of life. Correct. Um, It's Women's Month. And is. Shout out the women. Shout out all of our future past and present guests. Um, Shout out anybody that's trying something new. Bumping their head but continuing to go. That's the phase I'm in right now. Mm. Trying to step up my money weight class. Mm. Check out all the episodes. But you don't have no money. I have none. You're right. That's 100% accurate and I'm okay with it. Um, Yeah. The book's still available. Mm -hmm. Everything is still going. Still got motion. Doing Mm -hmm. all types of collaborations. 40 Acre Tech. There's a lot of stuff going. So if you support anything that I just mentioned or anything uh, that I got going... CEO Fierce got going. Just let us know. We're easily found. You see us in Atlanta, Georgia. Be respectful. Pull up. Throw the deuces. Stay dangerous. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into it. So for today's episode, we decided to do, kind of came up with this topic at the last minute. It's for our dear friend here, Mr. Uh, Lee. (laughs) Um, The topic is called Black Sheep, Black Sheep. Do you have any money? It's interesting. It's very interesting. I don't know why I still had the headphones on. Hello. He took these headphones off like he was about to deliver a soliloquy of some sort. You know, but it's just, it gets weird in there. I was doing the sound check and I just forgot they're in until, you know, until it gets hot. But whatever. That's neither here nor there. The people in audio land are going to have no clue what we're talking about because they're not going to be able to see my headphones. But now they know. First. I'm here for it. What's up? Define a black sheep. Wow. Okay, so we're just jumping right into it. Into it. Um, well, first of all, I was going to say hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing today? Um, I'm Stephen Lee, your humble, gracious guide. I'm buying time right now um, because I don't have an answer to that question off the top of my head. Um, a black sheep to me, I guess, would be... <sighs> You know what? I'll be honest with you. I don't even know. I don't know. I have no clue. I have no clue because um, I am one. Right? So for me, the idea of what is a black sheep is almost asking what am I? Um, I think that's a tough one for me to answer because... It's easy for me to to sit here and and kind of take out the good and bad parts, Mm -hmm. right? And just try to sift them out and give just the good. Mm -hmm. I would like to start with the lonely parts. Part of being a black sheep is that there is a section of your life. Everybody, I guess, is different. Um, Hmm. There's a section of your life where you figure out that you're you're the black sheep, right? Like, because there's there's a nice section of your life where you don't know any different, correct? Right? Because you're just you're just a sheep, correct? You're like every other sheep around you. From your perspective, you have no clue that you're different. Um, it doesn't even factor into daily life, right? So it doesn't matter. Um, there then becomes a point where it matters. And it factors in. Yeah. When and you it go factors from, in pretty pretty heavily. When you go from being the sheep to the black sheep. Correct. It's all sheep nonetheless, but. <laughs> and, and, and the people that are not, they point it out. And instead of um, 
treasuring it or or naturally like, okay, well, since you're so rare, we're going to make you the leader or the exception. It's a negative connotation. It's, it's completely it. the opposite. Correct. Um, so when I, when I heard you bring up this topic, I, I automatically had a, a reaction because I think about all the different times that I had been treated um, in such a manner that's opposite of the actual market value. Mm-hmm. Okay. What does that actually mean? It actually means that a naturally uh, black sheep's wool is more expensive than one that would have to be dyed. That's white. Mm-hmm. Right. But the term comes up because it's different. I think it's very telling because a lot of things that make you successful as an entrepreneur or an investor um, or creative are the same exact things that make you have to isolate because the way your brain works and your wavelength is so contradictory to the world and the way that everyone else works Mm -hmm. that it can become painful living in your, in your own mind. Right. So I think the, the part of it that's interesting about what you said is because it sounded like a nursery rhyme there. There's also, yeah. Like have you any wool, but, but the, have you any money part is very interesting to me because, um, that is always the the end, like justification. Correct. You know, like it kind of feels that way anyway. Mm-hmm. Best revenge is your paper, type thing. Well, and even even if it's not a revenge, it's it's your best acceptance. It makes everything okay. Right. I guess. Hey, we're just just keep it emotionally raw right now. Mm-hmm. I, I think f- it has been my best acceptance too. I don't. I don't know what I, to say f- about that, but I feel like this episode is an episode that could um, bring up some past experiences, some traumas. Sometimes you experience something, and in real time, you put that experience kind of in the back of your head to never really think about it again because it was just so like overwhelming. Um, Right, but right. but definition for me, black sheep in the simplest term is a familiar outcast. Mm. Mm. To me, that's like what it that. means. And what I mean by familiar is this group of people, whatever that group of people is, whether it's your social circle, your family, your sports team, whatever it is, they as a whole collective have a... A uh, generalized idea on the thoughts, behaviors, actions of this single solitary individual. Yep, what's acceptable. Correct. And <clears throat> they can be a part of the team, but they can still remain an outcast. Mm. So for me, that's what I mean when I say black sheep. Now, a lot of times I talk to you because I, I know I've said, <sighs> you don't see things from from other people's perspective until you experience it a lot of times. And then it's kind of like, I get it. And one of those things happened to be, uh, like I used this example before, actually. I remember when you worked for the team. And I think one of the players had hurt themselves on the field. Yeah, Naylor. Shout out Josh Naylor. And you call me after, I guess, the game finished that night or whatever. And the way in which you explained knowing what that felt like. Yeah. Knowing the sentiment. No, seeing the, the 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 disappointment in his face when he wanted to be so successful and put so much pressure on himself, yeah, and all of these things to the point where he even I guess in the space like isolated himself, like walked off and things of that nature. Yeah, it was it was rough for him. The way in which you related to that individual in that moment, that was what let allowed me to see. Okay, so I see that he he has to kind of feel it to understand. 
this yeah. this 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 black sheep thing, I feel like there's a part of you that has operated in that realm for so long yeah. that you have had no choice other than to kind of thrive in it. Like <laughs> I work in a, I work in a kosher or Jewish community where they have yarmulkes. The men have yarmulkes on their head mm-hmm. and their reason is, you know, being close to God, things like that. Right. Mm-hmm. God is always above you. But sometimes they'll walk around like in a store, or come into the store, go shopping, gas station, whatever, and they'll have a baseball cap on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the things I remember thinking was, you know, the baseball cap, you put it on and it's almost like you assimilate. You blend yep. in. It blends everybody in. Yep, Absolutely. Blending wherever and whatever space you're in, you, you're gonna blend in. You know yes. what I'm saying? It's 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 almost like a, a costume. Yep, you can make a baseball cap fit any any kind of social circle. Correct. Well, I've seen a couple black guys who were Jewish come into the space. Mm. I've never seen them in a baseball cap. Never. And there's a part of me that that sometimes is. I, I I sympathize in the sense where it's like no matter how righteous you may feel your path is, how spiritually led your path is, this, that, and third, at some point you can, at no point can you ever peel this off in order to assimilate. Hmm. Even if you have this exact same yarmulke on your head, you are always going to get looked at like, hmm. Right. There's a question of the validity of, of what your path is. Correct. Correct. Well, because I think you don't look like the others. You look like literally in that the black sheep. Well, I think I think that for me, what always gave me power is just not caring. Right? So I've always so I think my first battle in that was the way I speak. Mm-hmm. Right? It was I don't say always, but at some point, usually when I meet a a, a, a new group of black people, um, and and more so younger white people, mm-hmm. um, but they would question how black I am because of the way I speak. Mm-hmm. And I always would get very offended, but not from a standpoint of where most people get offended, where they want to um, justify their blackness mm-hmm. or code switch in the opposite direction, mm-hmm. right? What I always would do was I would feel more comfortable challenging what gave them the right or even think that they had a monopoly or a better understanding of what being um, a black meant than me being a black man, right? So I was a black boy before I was a black man, but I've always been black. Mm -hmm. So whatever I do will be black, Mm -hmm. right? That's not changeable. Mm -hmm. Um I remember when I when I gained this wittiness. It's probably about um, early early high school, maybe late junior high. I said, um, "I'm sorry because my pants aren't sagging and I'm selling crack on the corner, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not black, right? It's like without that." And I, it was around the time the movie Strapped came out on mm-hmm. BET. I remember watching that movie and thinking to myself, "This is so obviously acting." And overly exaggerated, right? This is not how a playground shootout plays out. How do I know? Because I've been there at a playground shootout before. Mm-hmm. I know how a basketball game can escalate from playing basketball, rough foul, fist fight, gunfire. Mm-hmm. Right? I've actually seen that progression before. I've also seen the progression of same thing end with someone getting stabbed to death. Mm-hmm. Right? And then having on the weekend, <clears throat> PS20, right? The basketball court is still there coming back to school on Monday and the dried blood is on the basketball court as we're playing recess. And it was in the news that the kid got stabbed that weekend. So everybody knew in the daily news that someone had gotten stabbed right there in my school parking lot. I mean, my school playground. Right. Mm -hmm. And that Monday we were playing in the dried blood. Mm -hmm. That is a whole fact. Right. So when I see the exaggeration 
portrayed on TV and then now people are looking for that as the actual representation. It never mm-hmm. made sense to me. How am I not black when we're using that literal uh, theatrical representation as the template? That never made sense to me. Correct. And so I never played into it in that realm. Now, I'll be very honest. There was a point of me in being the black sheep and being different in that that space also, because it's in all spaces of my life, I'm different. It's mm-hmm. fine. Um, I was hyper aggressive in order to prove mm-hmm. that I'm just like everybody else, right? Because there's okay. the stigma of you act this way, you cross your legs when you sit, you wear skinny jeans, you must be soft. So my compensation was was hyper aggression, mm-hmm. right? So once again, it, it, but it can be perceived as because you don't follow the rules, because you are the black sheep, this is why you're aggressive. This is why you run up against the a buck authority so much. Maybe, maybe not, but it, I think it was more of a cause and effect is all I'm saying. So right. when you when you see somebody who's different or you're having an interaction with somebody who's different in your business or your family, know that the way that you treat them and the interactions in the over time is going to affect like how they are. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Correct. Like that, that, that's so think about that. It makes you callous. It makes you a hardened human being. Absolutely. But these are the people with the most innovation and the most chance to actually get you the fuck about your circumstance. I mean, that's, that's the truth of it. What do you think? I agree. Um, I think a lot of times we touch on the subject of how, we grew up in an era where the idea of success was limited to a certain number of fields, doctor, engineer, uh, people of color, correction, doctor, correct, engineer, correct, correct. mathematician, uh, uh, athlete, entertainer. athlete, entertainer. Um, and then you had what I call your outliers in which you had to almost, you were, You were praised to the point where it could have felt like mockery. Mm. Um, mm. Talk about it. Uh, we look at the idea of. Um, black I want mo- you to talk let's about look this. At, look at the idea of black models. Okay. At one point, what was the narrative? What did you have to look like in order to be a black model? Mm. You were more than likely a tall, slender very dark skinned African woman. And the only hairstyle you were allowed to have in the space was short hair or bald head. Um, when you look at blacks in art and in literature, you always had to be or appear like the oddball out um even some blacks in the medical field like we look at the whole Ben Carson story an individual who kind of stuck out like a sore thumb in a community of people who look like him. He fit in perfectly fine in a predominantly white uh, community, but in a black community, he stuck, stuck out like a sore thumb. So, <clears throat> I think what happens is, <laughs> do you now build your success using the bricks that people have labeled you, disregarded you, right? Um, typecasted you, do you do that? Or do you ignore and be successful in spite of? Well, I think there's a couple things that I, that I drew from what you said. Um, one is... I don't know. I, I think that's part of the problem is that even with his extreme intelligence, he wasn't accepted on either side of the fence. Mm. You know what I mean? Like white, white America didn't have open arms for him. Mm. Um, 
regardless of uh, what he thought would happen. Um, also, I think that there's always going to be a standard or a typecast until someone just shatters it and says, fuck it, I don't believe in it. Correct. And has the confidence to do it, right? Because a lot of this is confidence. A right. lot of this is, um, you know, we joke around, um, I have a blockhead. It's no big deal. I'm funny looking. I think so. Mm-hmm. But I'm beautiful. Agree. And I think that um, part of 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 beauty <clears throat> is understanding your limitations, understanding what's your benefits, and and being real about it, mm-hmm. right? And embracing it and, and carrying it. I think that a lot of times as the quote-unquote black sheep or people who are misunderstood or outcasted, whatever we're using today, I think that a lot of times that we're we're not confident in our difference for real, right? So we try to isolate ourselves and put ourselves in situations where we're around like-minded people, natural. I get it. I think the money is in being able to be yourself in a room where you're only where you're the only one. Yeah, because w- your uniqueness in the space. Is what got you into the space. And if you know how to hold it and carry it, it could be something that's a positive and you can you can monetize off of it. Right. I, uh-huh. I think that what you're saying about um, this whole idea of like, hey, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to, you know, put my baseball cap on, so to speak. Uh-huh. Right. I think that is a detriment for people that we're going to label as black sheep. Uh-huh. I'll tell you why. In my own personal life experiences, the times where I've tried to assimilate have been absolute fucking failures. As I dissected and do the autopsy after, I believe they've been failures because I was uncomfortable. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Right. If you're uncomfortable, everyone knows it. Right. Doesn't matter what costume you have on. Everybody knows it. I think that people in our communities, black and brown, we're told and fed and beat over the head with the idea that whoever you are, if it's outside of the standard, right, it's a detriment in corporate America to you, mm-hmm. right? It Correct. is a liability. Correct. So if you just check all the, the boxes that are supposed to be checked, mm-hmm. put your baseball cap on, you can, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Could be further from the truth, mm-hmm. right? But that's what we're we're pushed. That's what we're fed, and then you get so far down the road that you're 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 invested in that that life strategy. Mm-hmm. What I'm here to propose to the group, hello everybody, is that at what point do we take the responsibility and say, you know what, that's not really my strength. I'm just not good at that, right? That's not where my success will will lie. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's have that that conversation. I'm never going to be a people person on a consistent basis. I'll have my spurts. I can shuck and jive when I want to. I can do it when I want to. I'm like I'm like old mule. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to work when I want to when it comes to attitude. But as far as... Um, on that topic, I, I'm very rarely outworked. Mm-hmm. Okay? It might not be easy to work with, but I'm rarely outworked. I think for me to try to get into a very corporate, um, rigid, you know, we do it by the book type thing, I think is very short-lived. When I do get into corporate situations, it's short-lived because usually I'm the first of my position or something. So it's taking them a while to figure out the boundaries of acceptability, and then when they figure out how wild I am or it goes too yeah. far, then it's over. You, you, you. I've, I've reached my maximum of the range. <laughs> You've broken protocol. <laughs> right. You've but, broken protocol. <laughs> and when I start, there isn't a protocol. Correct. Right. And they start building protocol around but, my But isn't that my the actions. narrative with the black sheep? The black sheep is always going to be the one to be made an example out of. And that's fine, right? Because we're... We're, we're, we talk about these things and we talk about these things to, to shed light right. for people. Once again, if you're, if you're like, oh man, maybe that's me. There's another side to this. So 
So we talked about the downside. We talked about the, oh, my God, woe is me. I'm the black sheep. The second part of this is, where is your money? Correct. Once you get past the ugly stage, so to speak, and you've figured out fuck them, mm-hmm. and you've figured out how to make money off your black wool. Correct. And you get more money than they do for their plain basic wool. Correct. Now everybody wants to know where the money is. Correct. Which I think is very interesting. Almost like you have to validate yourself twice. And they're tricking your ego. They're tricking your ego because they know for a fact that they've been talking shit and you can't wait to do anything but prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. But on the path to proving them wrong, you will end right back up with them. Yeah, I can see that. That's 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 a fact. That's what's actually happening. High level psychology here, whether they know it or not, whether you know it or not. Whether they can trick you to spend your money away, trick you to fuck it off and get a lawsuit or not handle your business and get away from the things that got you here. People are naturally going to try to get you on the level that they are. Mm -hmm. That's just Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't matter which way we go. So if you are with somebody who's got three times as much net worth and money than you, they're going to try to bring you up. Vice versa on the other way down, right? So that's a that's a that's a reality that we gotta live with. The question now becomes is how much are you willing to lose to bring this other person up to your level? Correct. That's the part. That's the part. And truthfully <laughs> uh, hey, I'm gonna say the real I shit think talk, it's the same man. Rule to say, uh when you start asking yourself that question, whatever answer you come up with your mind, take half of that. What do you mean? I go to the casino. And I know I'm not going to spend more than a hundred dollars. Okay. But when I go in, instead of telling myself I have a hundred dollars, I go, I can only lose fifty. Does that make sense? Yeah. It was justifying or or knowing how much you could lose. Especially in the case I guess for me I took it like almost the opposite, like shit, I'll give you fifty percent of what you need to be on my level. Mm-hmm. You got to make the other 50. Correct. but Or else mm-hmm. we ain't going to be on the same level and we can't move forward. Correct. That is true. However, you, like I say, you are a person. You've built teams. A lot of a lot of the things that I've seen you do, it appears as though it's been like a 50-50 kind of thing. You and another person. You and another person. You and another person. I love joint ventures. I love joint ventures. Right? I haven't seen you do anything with like, this person does this part, that part, that part. That, you know what I'm saying? Like, not, you, I haven't seen you do much with... Uh, like businesses in where you have four or five plus people involved like that. N- not on the partnership level. Um, I think that goes to because of my personality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I'm as, as somebody who is my, my business partner um, in a company, you know, I can, I can get very hot, very cold, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, And it's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I just think it's a, it's a very honest thing. I think that, um, part of being good in business is knowing your limitations. And my limitation is dealing with a bunch of people with a bunch of um, opinions right. that I think are ancillary and uh, a waste of time. I think that wasting my time is the worst thing you can do. I'd rather us move swiftly, make a mistake, and waste money than waste time by, like, fucking around. And you can get the money back. You can't get the time back. I can't back. get the time back. You know, losing the money, we're going to have an experience, mm-hmm. right? I've been talking about business. I'm not talking about just right. fucking up money. Right, right, right. Talking about in business, mm-hmm. the process of losing the money is going to come with, with an experience and, a, and mm-hmm. a lesson. Everything you know not to do the next time. And you, could, you can autopsy it and, and shake it up a thousand ways. When we just sit here and now we got four people that got to see the vision and four people that got to agree or five people, like, what are we doing? Once again... That's where I think it turns into cocktail business mm-hmm. conversation. Right. Me and my five buddies own a truck and we got a trucking company. I mean, how, how, how far can five people owning one truck really go? Yeah. Now, you say we got 10, we got seven. All right. Y'all are scaling up. But- it makes sense for you guys to have come together. But if we're coming together. And there's no growth. And it's not even growth, but it's something that one of us could have did. Two of us could have did. Then what do we? Agree. What do we? That sounds like the natural cop out. But it's it's yeah. But I think it's just such a universal problem that no one sees it as a cop out. 
They see it as being a justifiable reason. They really do. I think if we spent enough time in a crack house, we would be able to justify and come up with a lot of reasons for a lot of bullshit. <laughs> no, I really feel that way. And I feel that way. Yeah, I feel that way when people are talking about finances. I feel like it's a bunch of crackheads sitting around, passing around crackhead stories about money. It sounds like it. They're going to tell you they have a problem. Here we go. This is how I see it as the black sheep. This is why I'm so whatever. I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck. They're going to sit there and go, man, I need to do something about it. Mm-hmm. You're going to sit there and go, invest in real estate. They're going to go, I don't know nothing about it. I don't fuck with houses. I don't got time to be no landlord. Give you every reason in the world not to. Okay, fine. Right? Mm -hmm. Start a side business. You'd be watching all them kids anyway. Why don't you just run a little spot and do a little daycare? Oh, man, I my job. I can't, girl. I can't be. You do yeah. hair anyway. But why don't you? You're going to find a reason to justify okay. any and everything under the sun. Now, 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 we go to the crack house. You get EBT. Why are you hungry? Oh, well, you know, I, you know, I had to sell my stuff so I can get, you know, da, da, da. they're going to have an excuse why they don't have what is clearly laid out for people in their circumstance. Clearly laid out. But they're going to give you a reason. Now, the difference is, is this person is dirty and it's not as acceptable. But in their world, they're no more dirty than everybody else. They don't see all day. Yeah. They got no more excuses, no more different excuses than everybody else. Yeah. So what's the fucking difference? Yeah. That's that's where I come in and I sit there and I go, this is unfair how you guys are treating the people that are quote unquote different. And I'm not, I don't mean unfair and like, oh, oh, poor woe is me type way. No, I mean unfair and like, uh, we're not being logical, right? We're being spiteful in... The way that we're shifting the goalposts for people that are actually being successful. People that are actually seeing the game in the matrix for what it is, right? They're calling the ball as they see it. They're processing things faster. They're moving things at a faster speed. Instead of us naturally, and I say us because I mean black and brown. That's all I could speak of. Instead of us, my family, that's all I could speak of is my personal experience. Wrapping all resources around this Rarity. Mm -hmm. We throw banana peels, roadblocks, and and every other type of obstruction, and then do um, mental warfare by talking shit and doing the the family gossip train and the neighborhood gossip Ooh, train around shit. their failures, right? In order to sabotage them. But then on the back end, once they dredge through all that, we got the nerve. To act like there's a responsibility for them to come around, be a part of, and give opportunities. Great. Great. Come on now. Great. Come on now. So I don't want to talk about, oh, support black business. Yes, supporting black business is extremely important. But what about that two years before that black business owner was able to launch? When nobody knew that she had the slamming red velvet cake. All the people that were around her, all her cousins and aunties who had ate that cake for years and years, mm -hmm. that didn't put in a dollar for tax mm -hmm. season mm -hmm. to make sure she got that bake shop. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm saying the issue is. Yeah. It makes sense. That's the fucking issue. Because she had to have known that her cake or whatever was fire in her small nucleus first. Mm -hmm. And if that's not where she got her initial startup investment, there is a problem. I agree. And that's what I'm seeing. I agree. I'm getting, I have to go for funding. I have to go for collaborations. I have to go for capital. I have to go for favors outside of the people who have literally seen me go from, Hey, I want to buy this $5,000 bando with no roof to where I'm at now. Right. This isn't, this isn't like a, 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 a oh man, you know, I'm not trying to, it's like 10 years failures. Get up successes keep mm -hmm. pushing mm -hmm. got all the toys mm -hmm. right like like what i mean what what do we really want here well i'm learning that even being the black sheep you're gonna get dogged out 
and talked about, but people are still going to want you to bring them on your coattails. You know what I'm saying? They're still going to want that success for you because to them is, oh, well, I know so-and-so. Somebody is going to have a conversation about you one day and go, oh, well, I lose Stephen Lee. Mm -hmm. I knew him. I knew who that was. Yeah. But they're living off of the, technically, the clout that comes with your name. Yeah, but they're their own work. But now you're part of their cocktail business conversation. You see? Mm Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? Now it's myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, my buddy's got... So they're like, but but wait, what? You've never helped me cut a blade of grass. Right. But now you're at a cocktail party talking about how your buddy's got a real estate portfolio. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just had that experience the other day. Um, Talking about what I'm doing and somebody's, oh, yeah, I got this. I call their bluff. Now they now they ducking. They, They running and hiding. Now they don't want to talk. Why don't you want to talk? It's something that you said you wanted to get into. It's business that you said you was ready to do. It's business you said you had the money for. Mm, Sometimes that's it. Sometimes that's it. That was a cocktail conversation. I'm not the one, boys and girls. Don't have it with me. And and it's not just me. There is a chance that there is a me in every one of these cocktail parties. Yeah. Watch it. Watch what you say. Somebody's going to call your bluff. You say you got business. You say you got that. Hey, fuck it. I'll give you another com- another example. Angel who does our nails. Mm-hmm. Right? Let me. Angel does your nails. <laughs> Sometime I fucking, um, I crash the party and did. get my feet did when they're horrible. Okay? That's the truth. I don't want to make it seem like I have more than I do. But, hello. Shout out Angel. Okay, oh. shout out here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give them the. Hey girl, hey. <laughs> um, yeah, so this was Infinity Nail Creations. And Angel is amazing. Um her work is impeccable. Um she's extremely creative. But one of the things I've always said I've respected about Angel was as we discussed Black Sheep. Um so the salon that Angel owns now, she once worked in for someone else. She quit the job, was doing her craft outside of her home, and came back and bought the shop. Now, y'all want to talk about this whole idea of buy back the block? Imagine you buying the car dealership you got your first car from. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine buying the corner store that you used to go to with your grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's that right there. This could be (laughs) some cotton candy nails. I don't care. But that right there, that reason right there is why that woman is going to get my business. Yeah. And she's extremely successful. Extremely successful. And, And when I asked her about the process of starting, you know, what I want to start in that she was right on spot, gave me information. Zero gatekeeping. Zero gatekeeping. Let's call it for what it is. Zero capping. Zero gatekeeping. The, the biggest problem we have, especially when you're black sheep, hence the have you any money, is because a person will sit there with the resource they know you need and they will withhold it from you intentionally because they feel like they are owed a part of your success. Yeah, yeah. I've had multiple people tell me that. They're old a part of your success. And, you know, it ain't but so many times I have to go through life acknowledging what you may have done for me. Well, I also think it's a very, um, there's a very real thing about that, which is, if you are so instrumental in making me, you should make yourself. Correct. Right? And if I continue and grow and duplicate and replicate, and you don't, after we separate ways, I think it's a clear indication of who was who and what was what. Correct. 
People, so a lot of people hold on to that. You know, that's I the, think, that's the I think, pride and glory. I think that it's okay to get writer's credit on an album, but it does not mean that you can make another. Correct. Okay. Let's not, let's not get, um, measure yourself. <laughs> I, I want, I, I want, I want people to, to do a better job of measuring themselves. And, and I have been saying this a lot because I feel like it's a, it's a, a disservice for the world in the way that we've been operating is that we're allowing everybody to say everything to anybody. I think that we need to be honest about ourselves as adults, that there's a productivity level that we need to achieve mm-hmm. before we can start approaching and talking to people any type of fucking way. I agree. Okay. It doesn't make you a bad person because when you're out and about and someone has achieved or has accomplished or is doing things that you have no clue about what the air and the stratosphere looks like for them for you to either shut your mouth or ask them questions on how they got to a place that you want to get to because if they weren't doing something that you envied or that you were um curious about then you wouldn't even have noticed them Mm -hmm. right right if they looked exactly like you and fit in everything that you're normally seeing and that should make sense you wouldn't even have noticed them so if you're staring and you're doing all that, then just ask them what's up. Because there's obviously something about them that you feel like you're missing or you want to figure out the secret sauce. Ask them about their motherfucking drip. Ask them instead of making up these bullshit ass stories to make yourself feel better when you get in your fucking boring ass life. All right. Okay. I agree. Because this agree. person is taking risk. There's a whole lot of black sheep that shave their hair every day and put on fucking white wool. And then when they get home, they take the white wool off. Mm-hmm. And you can take that metaphor however the fuck you want. I agree with you. I'm just here to say that when I get around a bunch of white people, this is the way I sound. Mm-hmm. Get around a bunch of black people, it's the way I sound, guys. That's like how this is going to be. Okay? When I'm in an interrogation room, guys, not a new voice is coming out. Okay? So these are the moments where I want everybody to just be like, who are you? Mm-hmm. Okay, don't let these other people uh, tell you what you are and what's going to be acceptable for you and what your limitations are. You know, I don't I don't read the best. Right. I know people probably couldn't believe it, but it's the truth. And I don't have I don't have no fucking shame about it. It doesn't make me any less intelligent than anybody else. But I've never shied away from a contract. Do you understand? Never shied away from a contract. I will blow a contract up and take a full day to read that motherfucker if I need to. And then ask somebody else to read it. I don't care. Okay. But I'm not about to sit here and be afraid of high level business because of I, I don't feel the most comfortable reading. I think that's right. I think that's fucking crazy. My children read better than me. So what? Right? Like 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 I think that this notion that we're going to wait until we get everything perfect, perfect. before right. we go out there and take the arrows. That's bullshit. You know, that's bullshit. I think that I think we all need to just go ahead and, and, and get over the fact that the moment you figure out you're a black sheep, it's going to be that way the rest of your life. Correct. OK, so let's figure out how to maximize. Let's figure out how to thrive. Let's figure out how to how to be ourselves because our comfortable self is our most confident self, mm-hmm. which is our most productive self. And then and you'll be able to focus on the task at hand, which is the do you have some money? It, hello. Stop don't don't stop trying to fit in to these cookie cutter ideas of what this new age success is. No, everybody cannot be an influencer. No. No, everybody cannot be an influencer. Y'all don't have and the guess patience. What? A lot of them are broke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just like everyone can be a rapper, but guess what? Most rappers are broke. Are broke. So you're striving to be something. You, you, did you see what I'm saying? Like it's flawed logic here. Yeah. It's flawed logic. Let's just be honest about what it is. The people who make money in the music industry are the outcasts, are the black sheep. And I don't mean outcasts as a group. Shout out to the, the outcasts uh, as a group. But I'm talking about the producers, the people that we don't know what they look like, the songwriters, right. Right. the music executives. These people that, believe me, dance have choreographers. Money. Have money. You have no clue who they look like. 
Yep. No clue who they look like. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Even with the actors, there was a makeup artist. I am a hundred percent sure there was a couple makeup artists running around Hollywood that made more money that year to, that than Taraji P when she did Benjamin Button. Five hundred thousand. I know makeup artists right now and stylists that make that. Okay, mm-hmm. and you've never seen them on film a day, mm-hmm. a minute, a second. Mm-hmm. So really, everybody think about that. Where are we holding the value? Are we holding the value in, in being fucking uh, assimilated and, and cookie cutter and, and fitting in? Is the value in fitting in, guys? Is that what we're doing right now? That's what everyone assumes. We're trying to fit in. We're trying to look the part. Right? That goes, that goes with the look, look the part. Take it till you make it. Man, fuck you. This That's look the say. part shit has got to stop. The That's part and the success in the part is dependent on you. If you're successful, success looks like you. Thank you to you make it is what they say. That is what they say. There's a we live in the city of it. We do. I I hate to, I hate to say it, but we do. We live in the city of it here yeah. in Atlanta, Georgia. We live in the fake it till you make it. Atlanta. But I'm gonna tell you, this is the beauty of Atlanta. This is the part they don't tell you guys. Go ahead and give you guys a little one on one shot here. The beauty of Atlanta that they don't tell you. It's fake it till you make it for maybe three years. The next two, you're going to have the brokest couch surfingist. I hate this city. Traffic is everywhere. It's hot. You're going to have every complaint in the world because you're not going out four nights a week. The girls ain't hitting your line like they used to. You might have got a girl pregnant and now you got some child support. You might have caught a case and now you got some probation. Right? Mm-hmm. But you came here, you was the top of your town. You was the top of your high school. You was the top of your college. You was it. And then you came here, not so much. And so I want to caution everybody on this idea that you could fake it till you make it in any circumstance, but especially here in Atlanta, Georgia. This city will suck you dry in about three years. Suck you completely dry. Oh, well. And then you're going to be figuring out that this could be a real rough place like every other city. Then you're going to have legal issues, whether it be evictions, child supports, whatever. And then we're going to ship your ass back home. Yeah, we're going to ship you back home. All your clothes and everything that you done spent all this five years is going to be gone. And you're going to be right back at home talking about, yeah, I used to live in Atlanta. Yeah, that's how this going to work. That's how it's going to work. Ladies, it's going to be the same thing. When you show up to Atlanta, you're not the finest woman in the city anymore. Listen. Not even close. Listen. Won't be. It's not possible. Beauty is fleeting. The finest girl in Atlanta today will not be the finest girl in Atlanta by the end of the summer. Not only is beauty fleeting, but you can buy everything to look like everything else. I can buy my teeth. I can change the color of my eyes. I can buy my butt. Yeah. I oh. can buy my hair. Yep. I can buy my face. Yeah. It could be my face, my face. And when I buy that face, that face doesn't have to be the same face I have at night. Yep. Um, it's it's this thing where we put so much emphasis on uh The attraction, the instant attraction, the instant gratification. Yeah, but there's another part to this, not to cut you off. Mm -hmm. All that is true. But here in Atlanta, what we have is different. And she'll have all that and more money than you. And more money than anybody you've ever met. She could. She could. You get both sides of it. Real money. I'm talking real money. Not But you get. Yeah, but I'm saying you'll find in other cities, all that comes with a cash limitation. Right, she's looking for a baller. Da, da, da. There are women in Atlanta that check every one of those stereotypical boxes mm-hmm. that make more money than a ball player. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want everyone to remember Spanx was created here in Atlanta by a white woman. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this isn't that's a billion dollar company. Once again, they probably don't even know who the fuck she looks like. She looks like every white woman you see in Buckhead. That's mm-hmm. what she looks like, guys. Look her up. Yeah. Okay. So, this is just the city we live in. This is our culture. This is what it's about. If you try to keep up with it and it's not real, it will break you. Even you women. 
You can't keep up with her because she makes her own fucking money for real. Mm -hmm. You might keep up with it for a year or two. They know her at Nordstrom's. She's spending 2000 on makeup every two months. And has been doing it. So she, she's been through a ball player divorce already. She's gotten another businessman. She's, she's been through all that. And her lifestyle has not changed. Mm -hmm. You are here on what's called um, an experimental pass, sweetheart. Okay. You got the season pass. You have a season pass. You got a season pass. And your season pass doesn't automatically renew because you come here and he will find a newer version of you. Once again, that can, Mm -hmm. Hey, no, babe, I'll, I'll pay for that. The first time a man has a woman say, no, I'll pay for that and looks better than what he goes home to. You're in trouble. Same thing on the other side for a man. There are brothers out here right now. Hey, I'm 42 years old, baby. Okay. Look at me. 42. This is what 42 in Atlanta look like. Uh, Bullshit. Bullshit. (laughs) Ah. That's because you're not in a position to be looking, sir. No, I don't like men. Thank you. So you don't get to say this is what 42 look like. You a lie. I'm 42 and I'm in Atlanta. Thank you. And you need to rest on that. Don't add nothing else to it. This is what it look like. Face clean. Hello. Fresh haircut. Hello. That, you you, you Hello. look great at 42 in Atlanta. Not this when is what 42 in Atlanta look like. It's a huge difference. You can't speak on that one. Not now, not never. Sir. You're right, because I don't date men. So, 42-year-old women in Atlanta are beautiful. Um, Bullshit! Bullshit! They're they're shaped pleasantly. (laughs) That motherfucker said they're shaped pleasantly. That shit was so funny to me. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Man, man, oh, man. Listen here. Oh, Listen Jesus here. Christ. This is the problem with this city. And he 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 he, he pushes that narrative. Um, Get us back from, on the rails. Get us serious. Yeah, okay. So you come from your town, which is the most beautiful thing that exists over there. Male or female. You, yeah. Male or female. You come here, and where you were once one in, your, one in a million... You get here and you just another fish in the pond. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to digest. So what you start doing is making these cosmetic changes to yourself, these changes in lifestyles that don't fit you truthfully. Mm. So you can assimilate, so you can feel a part of. And don't realize you still stick out like a sort of. Yeah. I don't care how big your veneers are. <laughs> Sir, you look... You just look like you from the backwoods of Mississippi with some big teeth. That's it. Or Arkansas. You, you, you just, 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 just all of that, all of it. You just like sometimes you need to just rest in. You know what? I stick out a bit and worry about getting to your money. At the end of the day, mm. being this black sheep is not a negative thing. Sometimes it allows you to focus on what you need to focus on. Trust me. When you're getting 15,000 phone calls from this friend, this cousin, this uncle, this auntie, this sibling, this mom, all of this. When everybody relies on you or when everybody turns to you or when everybody needs you, it gets very overwhelming. It gets very overwhelming. Feeling like the sheep among sheep. Sometimes you want to be the black sheep and be left alone to your own devices. You do. And that's just what it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Um, You know, I just always hope that what 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 we bring as a as a media company, as a technology company. um, I hope that we're always bringing um, outlets and um, innovation and and inspiration to people that are trying to do something outside the box, right? Where there is your idea doesn't have a template, right? There is no path before you. You're, you're, you're the first one. 
and I'm and I'm learning this by the guests that we have. Once again, thank you to all our guests. Is that by by having this network and this environment where people are able to come on and share and listen and draw inspiration, it's letting people in different parts of the country know that they're not alone. Right. So. Shout out real estate guru right up the road in Charlotte, North Carolina. Essentially, he was doing the same exact thing that I was doing here in Atlanta, Georgia, same exact time period, buying up bandos, buying up the block, right? Um, there's a lot of different people that, you know, that are doing the same thing. Andre Payne, another great example. Right here in Atlanta, Georgia, doing the same thing, same time I was doing it. Didn't know these people. Didn't know they existed. Would have never met them if I didn't start the podcast. Right. And so I think that it's extremely important that we're using these opportunities and these platforms, and our, our technology to send out like a beacon. You know what I'm saying? Like like um, something that's uh, a buoy when people are navigating the rough seas of financial literacy, entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. growth, all of these things. And so when they're getting to a rough spot, they know that there is somewhere to grab that information. Right. Or grab right. that personal first hand account, right. not like reading it on on the Internet right. where you're like, oh, such and such went through this and became a millionaire in 30 days. And this is what they did. Da, da. No. no, really long form, in-depth hearing it over time. You get to hear like my inflections when I, when something's good's happened, something bad's happened, the different episodes, the different guests. I think that's real value that we're creating over years. Right. Right. And I think that that's going to help the next generation of investors. And that's just that's that's really what I what I think. And I think that next generation of investors is and always will be heavily populated by black sheep and different thinkers. There so you there you go. That's where I'm at with it. Wow. Is there anything that you want to add, CEO Fierce? No, I think you you've said everything. So, I mean, you always speak in a way that's for me, it's, it's very easy to understand. Well, that you know what? That sounds good to me. I'm happy that it is that way. Um, once again, this is Stephen Lee, Blackwall Podcast. I want to make sure that everyone goes over to our YouTube channel, like, share, subscribe, help disseminate the message, going over to our Patreon channel, become a founding member. We have all four seasons up on the Patreon channel, long form video, master's classes, everything you can possibly imagine to help kickstart um, keep your company, give you ideas, boost your investment strategies and your financial education and share, disseminate the message. And as always, stay, stay dangerous. dangerous, little black sheep. <laughs>